Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup, and this is the Linux edition of the news. And today, what we're going to chat about, we have a couple different distros and some changes to some desktop environments, looking towards some Wayland first support, for whatever that's worth. My testing in Debian with Wayland is not going as well. Like, Linux Mint Cinnamon is working better with my battery of screen screw recorders. <laughs> How'd that happen? I really don't know. Uh, Debian GNOME, worse than Linux Mint Cinnamon cinnamon on Wayland screen recorders. Yeah. <laughs> Am I justified in my points and positions yet? Anyway, uh, elementary OS eight enters early access. Curiously, this is the second distribution that I've seen in the last month that they have an alpha release for early testing that is behind a paywall. Uh, the other one being vanilla. I don't think vanilla wasn't a paywall. It was just a login wall. And no, I'm not creating an account at Microsoft to test out vanilla. I'll wait until it's publicly available. Uh, but I'm wondering if this is going to be a trend that we see where you have to have accounts to access early editions, which I'm okay with. I don't really care. And in elementary's case, it helps to fund the project. So you can only access this if you are a subscriber to support elementary elementary OS. This is OS 8. And uh, some of the biggest things is the uh, it's going to be Wayland first. Of course, they have to redesign Pantheon because the dock which they're using, uh, which is Plank, does not work with Wayland. Stop telling me Wayland is ready for prime time, folks. <laughs> like, but Plank does not work with Wayland, so they have to redesign rather than retrofit Plank to work with Wayland, they're just going to build a new dock for Pantheon, uh, which is fine, but they are getting a nice new mode, uh, bringing it kind of almost like a uh, almost like a, a gnome look to Pantheon, which is kind of neat. That'd be kind of cool to see how they how they are doing it. Of course, they're porting everything over to GTK4 and Wayland first. So we've already talked about that. The other major change is they're splitting the system updates out of the App Center. And that's, uh, I don't know, it's Lin uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon does that, of course. They have a separate space for updates and a separate space for software. And I, I kind of support that move. I've always liked Elementary's Software Center. I thought it was pretty good. This might actually improve it. The one thing I would really like to see they, they do is is stop giving warnings on well-reputed software like GIMP and LibreOffice. Don't warn me that this is possibly dangerous software. That's the biggest issue I've ever, ever had with, um, with elementary OS. But you can go ahead and get your copy of it if you are a subscriber to elementary OS and see what you think and provide some feedback back to the developers. Uh, LXQT 2.0 is coming out. This one is going to rely entirely on QT6. QT5 is going to be stripped out to have basically as slicked down as a run. Now, I'm not a programmer, so I don't know, but I'm just, this question nags my mind. If you guys are programmers, uh, let us know for sure. Is this going to break every app that has not yet ported itself to QT6? Like there is, they're saying no QT5 support, none. And so it's for Streamline. Of course, it's also going to be Wayland first as well. And so, you know, there goes the other half of the app. So we might only have about a quarter of the apps available. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, that's a little tongue in cheek, but I like LXQT and this is a good way to have a nice streamlined down system. Their biggest thing is they do have a new menu. Uh, so their menu now supports, I, I can't remember if there's supported search functions or not. It's been a while since I've used LXQT, but uh, they are, they do have a much more uh, attractive looking menu here, much more in align with some of the more modern uh, XFCE menus. It's called the fancy menu. Here's a up close shot of it. So I like this. We have our power options and our setting options very easy to find. I'm guessing this is our uh, our uh, user icon most likely. We have all of our uh, categories, the individual applications inside of favorites all or our category and then we can search. I think this is a huge improvement. So Here's, of course, their discussion on the Wayland support, which is going to be Wayland first. Presumably, they're going to have some of the back-end connectors that allows it to go back. So hopefully that's all right, but we'll get to see. And for any IRC users, HexChat enters its final release, basically saying we are done. There's not enough people that are helping to support it. So if anybody does want to fork it or keep it alive, 
the repositories are available. They're making it uh, making it known, uh, which is kind of sad because even like Linux Mint still comes with this pre-installed. And I don't know. There was a time I was experimenting with I, uh, IRC chat, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe with the end of Hex Chat, I'll get into it because I like to do things in this backwards manner. So, <laughs> but uh, for you using Hex Chat, just be aware that is entering the the uh, the death spiral now, and hopefully. Uh, uh, hopefully it we have good alternatives. Hopefully somebody comes along and forks it and continues on. Uh, next big update we had, uh, this was actually last week, but I think we had too much news last week. Only Office 8 is released. We now have PDF encryption and uh, some experimental right-to-left language support. So the people that were looking for those types of things, uh, these are options in there as well. They also did a slight redesign of the toolbar, which kind of diverts it away from the Microsoft Office look a little bit. It keeps the, the basic stylistic approach the same, but it does deviate a little bit. Like they're trying not to completely duplicate it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, hey, it's a new chart wizard option. That's neat. And so you can, of course, grab it if you're using the flat packs. You can grab it. They do have a dev package for Ubuntu as well. So you can try that out. Uh, I'll have a look at it again, see if it's good. It's, I'm not holding my breath that it's ever going to replace LibreOffice for my particular user space, but uh, it certainly is an option. And our final story in Linux news is the Steam audio source uh, is going open source. So everything related to it, they're releasing it under the Apache 2.0 license. This is good and possibly bad as well. So obviously the good is that this prevents any forms of roadblocks of people having issues with developing inside of Steam and inside of the, the audio stack. And the the way the license works, this is the, the downside of this, the possible downside. I wonder if they didn't make some form of mistake here. But the challenge with this license is it allows people to take the code, build on it, close source it, and release it as a part of a component of a proprietary system. You might say, well, that's certainly good for development, and it is. But if you can't remember, not too long ago, we covered the issue with Matrix. And Matrix had the same license, and the problem they had is everyone was taking the code, packaging it inside of a bunch of proprietary uh, proprietary applications and refusing to backport anything back to the project, and it was seriously hurting the project. And so I wonder if Steam might come back to this and go, eh, maybe we should have released this under something that's going to force them to release the source code. You can understand why they would take one stance or the other, but while this is a, a very good step to open source everything involved in the audio stack, the challenge we have with this is that it's going to lead to the same problem Matrix already had just a couple months ago. And so I'm wondering if this isn't going to come back and bite Steam later on, especially since the video game market is quite competitive. And I cannot imagine that um, uh, Sony and Microsoft might, look for a way to seriously harm Steam, and this might be a way to actually do that. And so that really is certainly uh, certainly a thought. So with that, uh, we're going to end the Linux news here. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. You can jump on over there, help support the channel, and that'll actually help support all the, the different things that I do. Uh, we did release the, um, the last uh, book for, where's it at? There you go. In your dreams. There it is. That was our last science fiction short story. I did not release the audiobook yet. I was waiting for my voice to come back. It's pretty close to there. Uh, obviously, I, I have too much driving over the next couple of days, but if uh, where I'm camping out for the next week works out, I'll be doing that this week, and hopefully we'll have that by next weekend. So that is the latest of the short stories. Of course, you can always go back and read the old short stories, although the audiobooks are only available for 30 days uh, once they're up. So with that, you can jump on over there, help support patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. -M.